Today we're going to show you how to take a calcium reactor and convert it into a nitrate reactor. If you want to know how, stay tuned. What's up YouTube, John here. Thank you for joining Blue Carbon Reefing. Today we are going to be giving a massive upgrade to my nitrate reactor and we are going to use a calcium reactor that I picked up from Jeff from Daily Reefing and using all of that media and more inside the calcium reactor. So I know I am not the only person who has struggled with nitrates. Uh, but if you are like me and your nitrates are high, I would definitely consider doing what I'm doing if you watch this video uh, to try to help reduce your nitrates. So I wanted to show mainly the size difference between the reactors I was using before and this new calcium reactor. So the new calcium reactor is a CM202 and it should hold a total of about 24 pounds of media. Um, we're going to fill it up maybe halfway with all of the media that I have, both the aragonite and the sulfur media. So the concept behind it is you basically want to use the sulfur media, which is the yellow media here, and that is going to basically be a breeding ground for a certain type of bacteria uh, that will grow, and that bacteria is kind of an anaerobic uh, oxygen depleted zone where that bacteria is specifically going to target nitrates and nitrates only. Now I've been using these other two reactors for about six weeks and already building the bacteria so I wanted to use that same uh, media and put it in the new reactor to help kind of kickstart everything but you can definitely start it from scratch of course. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get it all dialed in, uh, me using an ORP or ORP probe. Uh, and how the readings is going to help you kind of know that the, you know, the flow through the reactor and everything is the way it should be. Now I chose a calcium reactor because to me, once I get the nitrates under control, uh, I can always use the calcium reactor uh, for its intended purpose, of course, and start using that to, do to dose calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity to the fish tank, but uh, the nitrate reactor, I don't think I'll be able to convert it later on down the road, so to me this was kind of a win-win, a piece of equipment that I probably will need down the road. Now I think putting everything together is simple enough for you guys to understand what I was doing here, uh, but what I did want to do is I actually wanted to build a custom stand uh, for the reactor to sit on. I didn't want it sitting on the floor, but I also don't want it to where somebody, yep, you, can push it off. So essentially I just made a few cuts. I'm using all spare wood that I have here at home. I didn't spend a dime on this uh, wood and screws, everything I already have here. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to use these four by fours, obviously just to support the weight. This is just plyboard. And then I'm going to build a little bit of a lip. Basically, I'm going to have a 2x4 that will overlap so it can't be pushed off. It could obviously be pushed one direction or slide off, but I'm assuming once this is filled with water, this is probably going to be 40 or 50 pounds. I think it holds, it says it holds 24 pounds worth of media, I believe. So I don't know. I'm assuming that's not including water weight. So you'll see the finished product, basically I'm just going to use some screws to connect the ply board to the 4x4. Four four. Um, I'm already taking a, a level when I made these cuts, I don't know if you can see that, but we are perfectly level with the basement and I'm using one corner already that I built for the refugium, I just built out of 2x6s. Uh, just to prop it off the ground again because I wanted it to be able to flow as you can see these aren't level so the refugium flows into the second container so I had to prop this one up so the calcium reactor or nitrate reactor is going to sit off the floor here and I'm going to use some of this uh, foam insulation I like to use this with everything so that's it uh, I'm going to film this. I don't know how much you're going to see. I'm going to probably speed it up real quick. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you what I'm doing, why. Um, also, my other thought is 
this close, it's actually pretty close to this where it's not going to get any light spillage and get a bunch of coralline algae growing in here. It should be pretty much in the dark. So stay tuned. Alright, so far we got screws holding down, I'll show you underneath, holding down, and we got a 4x4 four four back there, can't really see if the camera picked that up, but we'll find out. So we're screwed in, this thing is solid, it's not going anywhere, I am going to put one more edge here, but one that's slightly shorter. I believe this is the one. Put one right here. Just to hold it on on that side. Okay, so here is the finished product. Uh, obviously the stand, as you can see, um, is built level, um, a few inches off the ground. Of course, I didn't want it sitting on the ground because uh, it will just build up cat hair and stuff down here. My, my one cat is in the basement here. Um, I did put the pink foam insulation. I really just kind of used that for kind of a insulator slash kind of noise vibration um, from there. So essentially, what's going on here with this calcium reactor is you have your your sulfur media which is going to collect a anaerobic bacteria that's going to basically take the nitrates out of the water um, I should have a sponge down here but I do not um, I could always add that later but essentially the sponge will stop the sulfur media from going down to this bottom chamber right now I can just see that the pump is working because it's blowing around a little bit I'm not too worried if that kind of crumbles up. I really doubt it that there's a whole lot of flow there that's going to make that crumble. Um, the aragonite is just going to be used as a buffer. It's also going to hold the sulfur media in place. So the pump itself is going to be circulating. Actually, the water comes in from the top. You can see a little 90 degree here. It's going to come in from this 90 degree right here, and it's going to basically circulate down pump is going to draw it in and it's going to come down to the bottom reactor and all the water is going to be pushed up through this way and continuously cycle. So that is how this is going to be a lot more effective than my current system uh, with just the flow through and the trickle. You know, you can get a channel where just like one little stream of water comes through and it's not, the water's not really touching the rest of the media. With it circulating the water, that's obviously going to be way more efficient. So. At this point, I've had it running now for, uh, let's call it five days, six days. So this is the point where you really just got to dial in the reactor itself. So just let me give you an idea of the top here. So I do have an ORP probe coming in the top that's taking a reading. Uh, I did buy a pinpoint, and I'll show you a picture as I'm taking this video, a pinpoint reader. Now, one thing I will say is that I am actually using the Neptune lab grade probe or ORP probe that I've had. I'm going to call it ORP. I'm using the lab grade ORP probe from Neptune with the pinpoint. Now the reason I'm using that is it might be a slight difference but I believe that the Neptune is maybe even like a millimeter wider than the pinpoint one so when I hooked this up with the pinpoint one I was getting a slow trickle here no matter how much I tighten this nut this nut actually will push down and hold this in place and there's a little rubber gasket in here which I will show you again as well 
that kind of makes it kind of watertight so you don't get any dripping. So now I've had it set up for five days. We're good. I have not seen a single drop of water anywhere, uh, which obviously is one thing I do like to make sure every time I add new equipment that I don't have any kind of dripping going on. So essentially how I have it here, um, I know with the calcium reactor you got a few different things, but I had to kind of use these in a way that um, I'm not hooking up a CO2 tank or anything. I basically just wanted to make sure that these are closed. I could just cap them off, but I decided to do a couple things. So one, at the very, very top is where the effluent is going to come out. I tied it into the refugium and you basically are getting your dripping here. Now I will say I had it at a drip a second and after a few days it has slowed. So I'm believing what's happening is the bacteria is obviously populating which is affecting the, the flow rate of course. So this is where you have to kind of dial it in and readjust this. So another way to kind of keep an eye on it working is going to be your ORP. So right now we're at negative 121. Um, everything I've done and the tips I've gotten of course um, who have used these is negative 150 to negative 180 is kind of the sweet spot where you want to be. So I'm hoping what will happen is that this will continue to go and it has continued to go down and down um, since day one. But what I'm noticing is yesterday I sped the flow rate back up to one drip per second and the, op the ORP dropped or went back up I guess because we're in a negative, went back up to negative 111 and it's gone obviously 10 points in a day back down but the slow rate has dropped of course and I can sit here and count it but let's say we're at one drop every 10 seconds now here I'm just basically recirculating this same line I'm hoping that if there's any gases or anything that may be collecting at the top it's gonna get recirculated back down here um, and then I do have on the exact opposite side I kind of created this as a kind of a gas off so there were are sometimes some gases so basically this is just a ball valve that I can turn on every once in a while if I'm getting any kind of gases or nitrogen gas to collect up top and that should expunge any gas that's in there um, out of the system itself which to me should help with reducing that ORP as well but we'll find out so for me this should be the best way to use as much media as possible. Um, as you can see, I'm probably half full. I'm going to back up. I'm about half full on this calcium reactor so I can add a lot more media if I find that my drip rate's not working too well or I'm not really bringing down the nitrates or the effluent's not coming out you know, at the zero parts per million that I'm looking for. Obviously, I can adjust this, add more media. I have a 1,200 gallon plus water volume system that I'm estimating so uh, I very well may need more media so this is where I can kind of play with it but to me this is going to be way more effective than what I was doing before again I decided to bite the bullet as far as biting, buying the calcium reactor but I'm hoping in the end I will be able to um, reuse the calcium reactors for its intended purpose later on down the road when we get the nitrates under control and we start packing this tank full of coral now, since I opened that up, we've already dropped back down to negative 116, and the flow rate hasn't really sped back up. So, I may not want to expunge this, because to me, maybe there's a chance it's letting oxygen back into the system. So, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. But that is it. I am going to keep an eye on this. I'll give you a little update. Now that we have a ton of Ketomorpha in here, I'm also hoping that this massive ball of Ketomorpha is going to start to make an impact as well. Um, but all in all, as you know, I've been very dedicated in doing everything I can to try to get these nitrates down. Now, the last thing that I wanted to include was you need something to feed the reactor itself and have a slow drip so just like a calcium reactor or just like the previous version I was using I'm using the Tom's Aqualifter pump which has an input line that's just basically taking water here going into the pump and then coming back down to the reactor 
right here it's going into the reactor here and then that's where you're going to have a little bit of water flowing in and then of course your water coming out which I've turned back up to one drip per second so I wanted to show you that um, the Retoms Aqualifter is good for up to 30 inches I put this up only because I was trying to make it clean but maybe we'll move that later as well so just after a few days of running the reactor, I'm already, what I would estimate this is at about 40 parts per million. Um, but that's it. We're going to keep dialing this in. Uh, if you have any questions on what I was doing, I know I kind of tried to cover it as quickly as possible because we're already approaching 14, 15 minutes on this video. Uh, I did calibrate the OR probe and uh, of course I didn't really show you that in the interest of time, but I think that one's pretty easy to figure out. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, again, any questions, comments, leave them below. Really appreciate you guys if you stuck all the way through this video to the end. Leave a comment and let me know you are truly a hardcore reefer. At the end of the day, I just wanted to give you guys an in-depth review of how to uh, try to make a reactor like this. I know I'm not the only person out there. Battling nitrates is a very common thing for most of us. So uh, if you have a decent amount of water volume, you know, to me, changing water is not going to be effective. This is going to be the best way to do it to me. And uh, as long as this continues to be successful, uh, I will continue to use this. So I will update you in the future. Again, thank you guys for stopping by and happy reefing.